Hey, it's Adam from Brighter. Again, uh, I'm gonna pick up right where we left off the last video. For those who didn't see the last couple videos, we built a term sheet generation application. Uh, we started with the ability to take a bunch of data that was in a database and automatically generate uh, term sheets for each of those records. We also added the ability to do batch processing to create a whole bunch of these term sheets automatically all at once. Um, let's take the next step. And the next step, if we look quickly at our application, um, here's the front end. We've got our records, our investment records, and we've got the ability to create uh, term sheets in bulk. The next step, I want us to imagine that the um, the you know venture funds uh, attorney that we're working with in our firm wants to make it possible to create a new term sheet, a new investment record, sort of on demand by filling out a questionnaire. That's a pretty common uh, capability, common feature request. So we're gonna add that to the app really quickly. The first thing I'm gonna do is just change the name of our application right now. It's prototype, which is sort of boring. I'm gonna call it term sheet, term sheet generator, which is uh, still boring, but slightly more descriptive. Refresh that. All right, term sheet generator. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add uh, a, a, an option here on the left that lets us create um, new records. How do we do that? All right, the first thing we wanna do is create a module. We wanna call this uh, new investment. And we're gonna have uh, an input or a series of inputs where we ask questions of the user. Then we're gonna have the ability to save those um, save those answers in a database and that'll be in our investments database. So we'll create a new record in the investments database. All right, we'll come back and we'll fill all this stuff out, but we're just building the basic structure of the, of the module. Once we create a new investment, we're actually going to pass this off to our, um, to our generate term sheet module. And this is one of the great things about Brighter. You can actually connect up different modules and have, you know, each one doing a part of the overall process. And then you can use them sort of in a mix and match fashion with different types of features, and different types of uh, capabilities. So in this case, what we're going to do is redirect. Once we get to the end of this module, we're going to redirect to our generate term sheet module. And that'll do the work of creating the term sheet. We're gonna pass along a parameter called investment ID that we're gonna get from our database when we create the new record. Okay, that will allow the generate term sheet module to kind of know which record it's working with. All right, so let's go ahead and just publish this. And um, you know, there's no real content in it yet, but I wanna go ahead and add it to our menu, our navigation here on the side, just so we can see it. We're working now in our test environment. So although it's available on the web to those who have the URL, it um, is different than our sort of live production environment. So we can feel free to make changes to it. All right, I've added the new menu item, it's new investment, and now we just need to do the work to fill out the questions. All right, so if we go to our new investment module, All right, and we're gonna make this a multi-input because we're gonna do all the questions in one, uh, one screen, essentially. And we'll start with uh, heading, new investment info, and then we'll just add all the questions, okay? And I'm just gonna go ahead and give us a bunch of inputs here, and then we'll go through them all and flesh them out according to the data that we wanna collect. All right, so let's just minimize these so we can see them. I'm not sure that'll be enough, but we can always add more. Now, what fields do we need? Um, we need, uh, obviously, we need company name. We need um, the name of the investor, all stuff like that. We'll start with company name. Uh, this will be the name of the investment company. Then we'll do um, 
investment amount. We'll save investor name and date because those are going to be background values. They're basically going to be the same for every investment. We're hypothesizing, uh, you know, a single venture fund that is using this tool to track all their investments or all their to create their term sheets. Um, so we'll do um, we'll do type. This will help us identify whether it's preferred or convertible purchase price, intended use of proceeds. Conversion terms, uh, conversion price, and I'm just going down the list of things that are already in my database. So I'm not making these up as we go. Uh, valuation cap, qualified, financing threshold. Now I don't actually know. I mean, I know a little bit about some of these things, but I don't know substantively what they're all used for. This is where you know we'd be collaborating with. Uh, one of the lawyers, uh, paralegal, somebody who's more of a subject matter expert to help us make sure that we get the right, um, you know, the right info and we use it the right way. All right, that should do it. So now we got to go back and I'm going to move company address up to the top. So, you know, this is, this is the way I typically do complex inputs. Um, you know, you, you make the questions and then you start to flesh them out. So you kind of get your structure first and then you go to a deeper dive. All right, so this one company name is going to be a text field. We'll just label it company name. This is what the user will see. We can always preview a particular node to get a quick glimpse of what the user will see. So right now it's just a bunch of unnamed and un unlabeled and unconfigured uh, uh, inputs, yes or no inputs. Company name is the only one we've done. but we are on the right track. So company name, then we'll do company address. That's going to be a text as well. We'll give this one uh, line breaks so it can have multiple lines. Um, all right. Next one, investment amount. We know that's going to be a number. Uh, type, we're going to go with two options. I think they were preferred and convertible. Uh, and let's set a default value here just for fun. Let's assume that we prefer, uh, no pun intended, we, we, we are going to set as our default value the convertible option. Purchase price, that's going to be a number, another number. Uh, intended use of proceeds, that's going to be a text. Uh, conversion terms, um, that's going to be, I'm just going to reference my data view quickly to see what some examples of that are. Conversion terms. All right, so we've got a few options. So we'll leave this as a single select. We'll call it conversion terms. And we'll make the options uh, series seed. Uh, series A preferred. I don't actually know if these are the right labels, but we're just going to go with them for now. Series B, Series C. All right. And again, I, I'm a little flippant about the content because uh, this is a, a prototype, but also because we can always go back and improve it. We can always refine it. We can always make it more accurate with the help of somebody who's a subject matter expert. That's one of the cool things about Brighter. Um, you can make changes on the fly very easily. And so you don't have to get too worked up as you're building about all the specific specifics. You can add the specifics and refine as you go. All right, conversion price, that's going to be a number. Uh, I'm sure we'll allow decimals. Valuation cap, that's going to be a number. Uh, let's say we don't need decimals there. Qualified financing threshold, that's going to be a number. We don't need decimals. And governing law state. Governing law state is going to be a single select, but let's use a data source for this. We don't need to type out all the names of the states. Let's use our data source list of states, which will just supply them and um, let us pick from the list. So we'll say governing law. OK, 
it. So let's quickly look at our uh, preview, our node, and see if it looks good. Price, okay. All right, I've got two here at the bottom that I haven't put labels on yet, so let me fix that. Click in, scroll down. What are the two that don't have labels? All right, this one, qualified financing threshold. And we've got um, valuation cap. All right, so that should, um, should be good. Let's preview just to make sure. Everything looks good, looks good. How's our governing law look? Good. Okay, so that questionnaire is fine. Now, we need to make sure that the values that our end users put into these forms or into in answers, the answers they provide to these questions end up in our database. This is important. So we're gonna have to map the values we just uh, we just specified in the in the input to the database. We do that with the at symbol. So we hit at and then we get a list with a search bar. So I can just start typing company name and then just pick that one. We'll come back to investor name and date. Again, these are gonna be background values. Investment amount, type, price, use, terms, Events. All right, so events we left out, so we skipped that one inadvertently. So let's just go back and add it. No big deal. Add input, uh, conversion, events. We'll make this uh, a single select. Uh, actually, let's make this a multi select. And uh, this is stuff like, you know, acquisition, uh, merger, change of control, or um, IPO. Let's use those four. Um, and I need a label. Again, let's just quickly preview it and make sure it's doing what we want. Conversion events, that's great. Okay. Go back to our database node and just pick up where we left off. Conversion events now should have something for me. It does. Conversion price. Cap. Qualified, and I'm just using it's essentially an autocomplete type of thing. Where um, now this one, because it references that data source, that static list, we want to um, uh, use the name of the state or the ID. In this case, we'll use the name of the state. Address, all right, investor address, document status. All right, so these are a couple. Now let's talk about the background uh, values. We didn't do name, date, or investor address. So we're actually going to bake these into the application. They're not going to be seen by the end user, but they're going to be available to the module to use. So we're going to make a text block called investor name. We'll call this, um, you know, brighter LLP. Uh, I'll assume that's the investor. Uh, we'll call this one, uh, sorry, investor address. We'll say, you know, 100 Main Street, Chicago, Illinois whatever the postal code is. And then we'll do date. So the date, we're actually gonna use the date of the user's interaction. So that's like current date. And we'll just call it current date. All right, so this is a built-in value that just takes whatever date the user is on and, and uses that value as the current date. Um, now we're gonna insert investor name, we're gonna insert or reference current date, and then we're gonna insert or reference investor address. Great. And the last one we need is status. So um, we'll do, right before we save the record, we'll do status. We'll call this uh, new to investment. Oh, we'll just call, we'll just say new as the status. And we're gonna map new into there. Oh, status, I mean, there we go. All right, so what are we doing here? We've got uh, an input, a multi-input with a bunch of questions. We've got a few built-in values here that we're using. We're saving it all into our investments record. Then we're gonna redirect to the generate term sheet um, module, and we're gonna pass along this investment ID to help the term sheet module know which record in the database to use. I'll publish the, all of these changes. 
And one thing I want to check really quickly is I want to make sure that the generate term sheet module is ready for us. So it's looking for an investment ID. It's exactly right. It's going to get the investment record from the DB. It's going to use it to uh, do the term sheet. It's going to update the status. It's going to uh, update the investor record with the term sheet and a new status. It's going to show the term sheet and then it redirects to a data view. So all that looks great. Let's go back now to our term sheet generator and we'll say, um, you know, we'll call it high value startup Inc. And it's in, you know, one, 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 um, uh, Apple way in Cupertino, whatever the here, zip code is investment amount. We'll say 2 million. We'll call it, we'll stick with the default, it's convertible. The price, we'll say 50 cents. Use of proceeds, R&D, um, team expansion, and strategic acquisitions. I don't know. Uh, we'll call this a Series A. Conversion price, we'll say $2. Valuation cap, we'll say 10 million. Qualified financing threshold, we'll say, I don't know exactly what that means in this context. 15 million governing law we're going to go with california and we'll say that all of these are conversion events all right so i'm going to hit next and what should happen is we will generate the term sheet and we should see it there it is just use the the template that we had done in the previous um the previous uh videos looks good we'll progress We'll look at our investments list and we should see it on here. There it is right there. All right.